Well, everybody was happy with Pick a Kid Plus, putting everybody in groups. They said it worked out great. And the kids got so excited when they were put in new groups, they would say, can you put us in new groups and everything. Until one time we got a new criteria for evaluation when the teacher said, I hate to say it, but I can't use Pick a Kid to put my class in groups anymore because they want me to fill out a form that says what was my rationale for putting kids in groups. And I have to say things like I made sure that there was a smart kid in each group and that there was a slow kid in each group and everybody, you know, so that they'd be spread around so that uh, everybody would get the help they need from within the group. So my response was, well, if you can give me a number, a two-digit number, and give me the relative score for these kids, it doesn't have to be their current grade or anything. And I was in a hurry, so I didn't ask, I didn't ask for a number, I'm asking for a two-digit string. And if you go, if you've noticed when things are put in alphabetical order, everything that starts with a one like one, a hundred, a thousand, they're all at the beginning, and then the two, twenty, two hundred, two thousand. So keep all of your attempts to scale the kids into two digits, and everything will be fine, and you won't be able to tell the difference between sorting by strings or sorting by numerical value. So this was attempt three, and this is now called smart pick a kid because now there's going to be a rationale on how the students are going to be co connected and put into the groups and there's also here a keeping group points as there was in pick a kid plus but the keeping points will work out the same but you'll see that the file names are different they're not period underscore one they're period underscore 1G, meaning that there's some sort of grade given. Let's look and see what that data looks like. Now, I just used my cuts, some of my relatives' names. I hope they forgive me. So I said Adam S, comma, and again, this is comma delimited stuff, and I just made up a two-digit number, 43, 58, 46, 29, 81, just made up some two-digit numbers. And then I deliberately here put under Jan, Jane, Jimmy, and Joyce, I put 98, 97, 96, 95. You can see that th there's the, the scores that had the highest value. So the person's name, comma, and then a two-digit number to sort of give them relative performance in the past. Or some teachers use this creatively because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The program will take this list and sort these students by these numbers or by these strings. And then what it will do is if you ask for four groups, the score, the four highest score students will each be placed in a different group and the four lowest score students will be each placed in a different group and then all the others will be randomly distributed in between. Now some teachers deliberately give two students either a high score whether they're good or not or a low score whether they're good or not and make sure that like one of them is a 99 and one of them is a 98 and that way those two students will not be in the same group so you can control things that way too uh, by making sure who's in which group. But the way I programmed it was to sort the, sort the students by those numbers and then however many groups you ask for, the top ones each get assigned to one of those groups. So one of the higher scoring students is in each group and then one of the lower scoring students is in each group and everybody else is all mixed in. So hopefully there's somebody that can help in each group. That's what the files look like. Now remember they have to be comma delimited so don't use any other commas and make sure you have one set of data on each line.
Now let's do, this is Smart Pick a Kid. First that happens is that we get a pop-up box that says, note to teachers, make sure that these are saved in period underscore one G dot text or period underscore two G dot text. Those have to be the names of the, of the files. And instead of the rabbits coming out of a hat, we now have a wise owl. I wanted to use a different graphic so that the teacher wouldn't get confused as to which one they were using. So I don't have the students, the G show up here because I didn't want the students to really understand where to find those names. So let's say we picked period underscore one and we get the names of these students. And we can pick a kid as usual. And just it will just pick up one of the kid, or we could go to pick a pair, or we could go to pick groups. Now, if I wanted four groups and say go again, we can pick our mathematicians. Let's do authors this time, and let's put Shakespeare and Keats and Dante and Pope Alexander Pope. And we'll go on and sort. And this confirms that it's period one. And here are my students. So I'm confirmed in what I had chosen and will sort the class. And if you remember, which I think we said which one had the. Jay's had a smart kid, so if I picked the right class, maybe I didn't, maybe I picked the wrong class. I think it's going through the alphabetical. It's been a while. Oh, here's a J, a J, and a J, and a J. Each group has one of those J's which had the highest scores. And if we looked at the ones that had the lowest scores, eventually they'll have um, close with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, if we print this, it will it should give me should give me the students that belong in each group so that I can refer to them and it should keep the points as well. Thanks. Bye. Pick a kid. Smart pick a kid. And pick a kid plus three levels of teacher classroom utilities. Thanks. Bye.